Yo, what is up everyone? How's everyone doing tonight? Thank you guys so much for tuning into my video of how I built a telescope. Uh, it's been a huge thing. It's been on my bucket list for super, super long. And now that I've actually have it done, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much. Really though, before this video kicks off, I wanna go ahead and give a huge thank you to Amy and Nick. You guys have been some of the biggest help. You guys let me use all your guys' tools. And I'm a person that didn't go into it with experience at all. So I only picked up a drill maybe once or twice in my life and you guys really helped me create this. So thank you guys so much. Uh, other than that though, for all like the parts and stuff, like the focuser and the mirror, I had to wait for those to kind of ship here. Uh, I also had to get the tube shipped here. So that also took a little bit. Other than that, I used uh, places like Ace and Lowe's to buy some of the tools. Uh, really though, if you guys have any questions about the build or anything like that, uh, feel free to hit me up. Uh, I'm more than willing to help and I'll be super excited to. I also read some articles and I watched some videos of how to actually do it. So I'll also put those down in, below in the description. Uh, other than that though, let's like really get into the video uh, and I'm super excited. Let's do it guys. Okay guys, so starting off with day one, I just had to make the two circles. The first circle had to be a little bit less than 10 inches um, so it can actually fit into the two perfectly. So I think I made about 9.8 or 9.9. .9. And then the second one had to be about 8 inches. I didn't want to make it any shorter than 8 inches because then it would be very hard to actually hold the primary mirror. So making it a little bit above 8 inches is perfectly fine. Just note that it's going to have to hold the primary mirror on the sides. So you might have to put a little bit more glue when it comes to it. Okay, and then once I had the circles all made, I actually also made the areas of where I'm actually going to put the bolts. So I put those all about 60 degrees apart away from each other, and I put outside ones and inside ones. So the outside ones are ones that are actually going to be spring-loaded, meaning that if I tighten them down, they're actually going to bring the primary mirror closer to us. And the inside ones were actually going to be the push bolts. So those ones are going to be having pushing against a plate that's on the other um primary mirror um, holds like the cellar and that's actually pushing against it so it actually creates an angle and helps the spring loaded ones. So it gives me a better uh, angle or a different angle of when I'm looking at either planet or moon. Alright guys and then so here's the whole layout the whole thing you can actually see where the bolts are going to be um, and then I also got a little scratch on my hand um, already on day one. Alright and then so here's the first day actually working in the workshop. Um, you guys can already see, I already cut out those circles. Um, I went ahead and used a jigsaw for that. And then I also went ahead and sanded the edges, making it as smooth as possible. From there, I really just grabbed a drill and I started drilling down those um, holes uh, where I marked it. And I also used a recess bolt to make small gaps. Uh, that way the bolts can actually lay nice and flat and we can have a nice smooth surface. Alright guys, so here's the same day but different angle. Um, right here, though, you can actually see I'm putting on the push plates onto the 8-inch diameter um, plywood. Um, so this is the thing that's going to be getting pushed by the bolt so we can actually adjust the angle. Um, yeah, and I also want to go ahead and clarify exactly what kind of plywood I was using. So I was using maple sand plywood from Lowe's. Um, it didn't cost me too much. I believe it cost me somewhere around $32. Uh, and I got a pretty good amount, so I'm pretty actually happy with that. Another thing I want to say is do make sure if you are following along to put the push plates in the right spot. Um, this will become a little bit of a problem later on down the line and it might be even too late. Uh, so yeah, it does really, really help if you're double checking. <laughs> All right, and that's the whole assembly of it you guys can see. So this is right after I spray painted the whole thing. It's actually spray painted in a matte black. This is a way um, I can get the least amount of light pollution so I can get the best picture of the sky, of course. Uh, going in a little bit of detail of the whole entire assembly, uh, from the very bottom, you can actually see the 8-inch diameter circle. So on the sides of these, I actually have corner braces. The corner braces are going to be the ones that actually hold the mirror. So we're going to actually glue that all together. And then going right through it is going to be the bolts. In the middle of the bolts, we have the compression spring. That's going to be pushing away the plywood. And on the very, very end of that, we, there's a washer. And then there's also a wing nugget. The wing nugget is going to help us adjust it for whenever we want to have a little tilt. Uh, and then with that plywood on that one, we actually have a T-nugget. So the T-nugget is going to be what's going to let us screw in the next bolt. 
uh, for the tea nug, it's kind of funny because I just hammered it in, uh, and then that bolt's going through it, and it's actually hitting on to that push plate, off. so we actually get a nice little push. Like the cloth one? All right, guys, so this is actually me cutting the tube for the first time. I cut mine to 29 and a half inches, but that's because of the way I got my measurements. So in order to get your measurements, you have to line up a light to a flat surface and then bring it out to a perfect measurement so you can actually get the perfect picture of the bolt within the light. Um, I actually drew a little blueprint. Um, so if you guys do want to check the description, there is something there for you guys to actually go off of. Um, but it was just pretty simple, and I'm just making a little quick line and sawing right through it. All right, so now we're actually painting the inside of the tube. Uh, we're painting it another matte black. That way we can once again get the least amount of light pollution. All right, so here we have the installment of the fiberglass. I really wanted my telescope to last as long as it possibly could. So before I went ahead and painted it, I actually used a matte fiberglass. Uh, and I was really lucky because my whole entire telescope was able to wrap around the whole entire thing in one sheet. But sometimes, um, depending on what size you actually have, you might have to use several sheets. Um, and then, yeah, so I really just mix up the resin and the hardening in there and started painting. Uh, when you when you do start this, you really only have about 10 minutes till it starts to dry or else it becomes really, really, truly difficult. Um, and it wasn't really dangerous at all. Sometimes fiberglass could be dangerous, but I was actually okay in this um, process. And I do want to also add, I think the whole thing actually cost me around to be $35. I know the resin was about $25, and then the brushes were probably around 5 and then I think even the matte fiberglass was around $5. So it didn't break the bank, but resin can run out really, really quick, and then you also have to get hardener with that. So it does, um, it does come in jeopardy if you are running through it really, really quickly. All right, after this, we just cut off the remaining from the sides, and then we sanded it down. I had to use the 150 to sand. Okay, and then I got right back into the fun, and I started painting that thing a red gloss. Okay, and another huge thing that we actually did that day is that we put the primary mirror actually on. So if you guys actually see, I actually have these two or three metal rods, and it's actually going to create a space between the mirror and the plywood. So the reason why we did this is so when we actually put the silicone, it's just actually sitting on top of the plywood. It's not actually fully laying on it. Okay, for this part, we're actually making the secondary mirror holder. When we actually look through the lens, we're actually looking at the secondary mirror that's bouncing off the primary mirror. Um, so for this, we're building it um, at a 45 degree angle, and I'm using an inch and a half um, silicone wood that I just picked up from Ace Hardware real quick. Only cost me around maybe $8. Okay, that, so that was a little bit of a struggle to actually cut that. But once I had it done, I was just going to drill three holes into the side. Um, so these three holes are actually going to be a thing that goes through the threaded rods. I got six-inch threaded rods from Lowe's. Um, and the threaded rods are just going to go right through that telescope. So it's going to be holding that secondary mirror. Um, and then I'm going to be holding it with a little nut um, on the very end of that. I didn't get to actually record that part, but it's pretty easy. You're just going to go ahead and drill it with the drill uh, and then go ahead and put it through. Um, when you actually put the secondary mirror on it, I just went ahead and used um, Gorilla Glue. That was really the simplest thing, and so far I've had no problems. One thing I did have to watch out for, though, is how I actually glued it. You have to glue it on the edge that's running no mirror. If you're doing that, um, it's going to have a lot better balance off of that primary mirror.
And there it is. I'm actually installing that primary mirror. Um, I'm going to be drilling it right into the sides and marking where I actually put those screws. That way, if I do have to take it right back out, I know right where to put it. Uh, and then we also have an unboxing, which I got in the Lord of the Rings from Amazon. So the first thing I'm actually showing you guys is actually for another project. It's going to be like these little fish hooks. Uh, if you guys want to guess what project that's going to be for, go ahead. You know, it's always uh, encouraged and it's also free, the best part. Uh, and then here we also have my focuser. My focuser I actually do really like, you know, it just really, really well. It was easy to install. Uh, I almost have no complaints. Yeah. Just a little bit about this focuser. So it did actually cost me $35. Um, and it also did take a month and a half to get here, so it was kind of a waiting game. But I really have no complaints about it. The installation was very easy, and it also adapted very, very well to all my lenses that I did have. So it, it works great, and I actually do really enjoy it, and I'm glad I got it. All right, so at this point, I'm actually trying to find the center of the telescope. I did steal Amy's foam roller, so shout out to her. And then I also have my primary mirrors in, and then my focuser is already attached. I just had to screw that in. And then so is my secondary mirror. So I'm just trying to find the center so when I actually do put it on the mount, I can adjust it back and forth without actually having to hold it. All right, and then right here I have the all-purpose drains. I'm drilling just two holes into it so I can actually put it into the telescope. The all-purpose drains are going to be on the side, which is allowing it to actually go back and forth on the mount. Alright guys, so I never actually got a chance for me to film the cabinet on how I built it, but it's actually very, very simple. So I ended up using the same exact plywood that I used for the primary cell, and the top is going to be 12 by 12 and the bottom is also going to be 12 by 12 I ended up getting a 12 inch uh, Lazy Susan, so this thing can do a 360, and I also ended up putting wheels on the bottom, so this thing is a little bit mobile. For the sides, it ended up being 12 by 24. I made this so I can actually adjust from my height so I don't have to bend down low to look through the focuser. And I also don't have to get on my tippy toes when it's too high up. Um, and on the inside, I made it 10 by 10 and I ended up also putting the door on the front. For the um, To close the door, I actually ended up using a hook. And then I also painted a white inside because this is super helpful for when it's dark outside and you're just running through that cabinet. So here we're actually building the mount for the telescope. I ended up making it 12 inches wide and then 16 inches in height. That way it floats just above the mount. Um, and then I also ended up making just little C-shaped um, circles. Um, that way the all-purpose drain can fit into it perfectly. I literally got the all-purpose drain and kind of just traced it out. And then I cut that with a jigsaw. But for the whole thing, I actually cut it with a circuit saw. Okay, guys, and I also did end up making the mount a little bit more triangular than the cabinet. I just didn't want it to look like this big, giant cube. I thought that would be really funny, so the triangle really did help. All right, guys, so you guys are seeing me put on the final piece for my whole entire telescope. Uh, but when I ended up putting it down and then trying to put the telescope on it, it just fell directly right through, and I realized I made the mount too wide so i ended up detaching that piece cutting two inches off of it and then reattaching it again so you guys are going to actually see that this pine wood um, that i'm using is actually different this one's actually um pine plywood which is um around 24 dollars final notes on this just so you guys know i did also use flat head screws when putting in the plywood um, in the cabinet and also on the mount. I also did not attach the mount to the Lazy Susan because I didn't want it to actually be this one giant piece. I actually didn't mind if it was three pieces. So I kind of kept it like that. But yeah, uh, there's really it. And then, uh, bam, I finished my telescope. <laughs> 
All right, and that was it. The telescope was done, and I am more sight than ever. The tools are now down. I'm just pumped up, guys, for real. I want to give a big thank you to Amy and Nick. You guys have been the biggest help ever with this project. I literally could not have done it without you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, from here on out, I was just kind of waiting for 12 o'clock to hit. I knew that's when the skies were going to clear up. Um, I knew what I wanted to look at. And it also gave me a little bit of time to paint my zodiac sign on my telescope, which if you guys haven't found out yet, I am a Scorpio. I also ended up um, painting the cabinet and the mount a uh, galaxy theme, or at least I attempted to paint it a galaxy is theme. It, uh, just a little bit of background on why I kind of built a telescope. Uh, for me, building a telescope has really been on my on my bucket list for a very long time. Uh, ever since I was probably around 10 or 12 years old, I've just always wanted to do it. Me and my mom, we would actually go down to the beach a lot, and we would look across the Pacific Ocean, and we would always just ask ourselves, like, we'd be like, man, I wonder if anything is uh, looking right back across, right back at us. And we thought that was like the most fascinating thing that we had a connection with something or somebody that we didn't even see. And so I kind of bring this same curiosity to the telescope. And I'm just wondering if I'll make another connection with something out of this world, guys, truly. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'm definitely around for you guys. Also, there is a really great links uh, down in the description. Uh, a lot of them I use myself. Um, some things I even suggest to you guys if you guys do plan to do this yourselves. And um, yeah, feel free to check that out. Uh, other than that, though, the guys, uh, thank you guys so much. I'm really appreciative of it, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.